Hey fellas, welcome to part two of Monogram's 172nd scale space shuttle with boosters build. In this exciting episode, I install the window. Well, there's Ringo. <laughs> well, hey buddy, what you doing? Hey, get on there. I install the windows, put the uh, payload bay doors on, and then uh, and then I alter the tail fin. So I show you how I do all that. Now the tail fin on the Columbia during STS-107 was a bit different than a lot of the other orbiters because it uh, they added a camera on top and then a parachute on the bottom, so it's, it altered the profile of it. This is a good puppy. This is you is. Kisses, you is. I'm kisses. Um, so let's take a look at it. So here's what we got so far, and the tail fin is back there. It's still getting worked on. And, yeah, don't eat the model, Ringo. But I'm really happy so far with how this is turning out. It's going together a lot easier than a... Then I remembered the last one, but I guess, you know, when you build a model the second time, you, you kind of know what to look for. And then obviously with watching Duty Cats uh, videos, the, uh, it, it really helps out. So, Zuka baby. Yeah. Um, I, when I, when I uh, began this build, I wasn't sure if I was going to put it on YouTube because I didn't really think a lot of people would be interested. But uh, apparently a lot of you are. And uh, I would like to dedicate this video to... One of my viewers who I think is probably more excited than most, Knack Dibby, <laughs> you know, he, uh, he comments on a lot of my videos. And this one in particular, he, uh, I think he's commented like four times. He really, seems really excited about it. So, Knack, this video is for you, brother. All right, let's get on with the video. All right, fellas, let's take a look at what I've got accomplished off camera. And we'll get this stuff out of the way. I went ahead and started working on the back end. And I drilled out the holes for the thrusters in the back. And I messed up on a couple, so I had to plug them and re-drill them. And I did a little bit of filling in as well. So hopefully once I get primer on those, those will look okay. But basically drilled those out, inserted some plastic tubing, and away we go. I also added the thrusters, which were just depicted by some holes in the shallow holes in the back. And I drilled those out and inserted some plastic tubing there as well. Took some point uh, zero two zero plastic card, drilled some holes in it, and replaced the panel. There's some kind of, a, I don't know, equipment panel or something back here with buttons and, and uh, plugs and all kinds of stuff. So I'll probably work on that a little bit more. I'm not really liking how that's looking. The, the plastic card split in a couple places. So uh, if nothing else, I could sand that away and, and redo it. But uh, I think I can work with what I got. Um, what else? Oh, I did add a, a little railing back here because what I'm doing is once I get all the internals set, I've went ahead and I've glued the, the uh, bay doors, but I've glued them with a strip of point zero or one, uh, zero one zero plastic card, so the real thin paper stuff. And I just glued them so they would stay together, but I can still bend them, okay? And I went ahead and put a rail of tubing along the inside, so that's gonna hold everything in place. So once I get everything on the inside done, it's gonna help me glue this a lot easier since I've got these and I can still bend them a little bit, but they're, they're pretty close to the shape that I want. And the rails are gonna keep it from pushing in on itself. So I think that is a pretty good solution. And again, once I get this glued down, then I can run a bead of extra thin right along the middle here, and uh, that should set up quite nicely. So that's where we're at on those sections. I went ahead and sprayed the inside black just because I had some extra left over, just, to, uh, just in case something peeks through. You're not going to be able to see a whole lot through the windshields. Um, as far as the windshields go, I went ahead and masked off the inside. If you look at the real thing, it's almost like there's a, some kind of a, a black, uh, it's painted black or some black seal on the inside. I can't tell if it's on the inside or the outside, but I went ahead and sprayed it on the inside of the windows. And uh, I could have been a little bit neater with my masking, but uh, I think it'll be okay. Now I went ahead and glued the other one in, and this is somewhat of a task. Now I, I, I know at the beginning I'm gonna have to do some filling and sanding, and that's just the way I set this up and the way the kit is. 
So how I'm gluing these down is I've got these two struts and I went ahead and filed them down just a little bit, trimmed them so that um, they don't stick out as much. They do fit a little bit better, a little bit closer to the fuselage. And how I'm gonna glue this is with sprue goo. Now I have thinned my sprue goo down just a tad. It was a little bit too thick. And I'm going to put a little bit of sprue goo right here. As far as I'm concerned, there's no better adhesion, adhesive glue to gluing two pieces of styrene together than using sprue goo. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and wipe this windshield down on the inside. And I'm going to add, oh, to, to help me pick this up, I've just taken some blue tack and stuck it to the outside. That way I can, I can manipulate the uh, windshield from the outside a little bit easier. I've got my sprue goo and I don't, I don't want too much, but I do want enough to where it is going to stick and not smear. Because I definitely don't want to get this on the inside of these windows. So now I'm going to take my window glass and carefully place this on here and just hold it. Now because I'm not using to me extra thin, the, the glue's not going to go everywhere. Where I put it down is where it's going to go. It may run a little bit, but uh, I'm just going to hold this and let it set up and then I'm just going to come along the edges and put some of this sprue goo down along the edges of the windows to get a really nice seal in there. Now, what I'm gonna use to, to uh, fill in my gaps, I'm not really sure. I could actually use just more sprue goo to fill in along the edges and sand it, which I, I may do. And uh, that's probably maybe the better option. I just find a hard time sanding sprue goo. Now, a lot of people don't, but um, I like sanding the uh, the CA and metallic pigment a lot better. Ooh. Tell you what, to be a little more precise, I'm going to use a brush and just get this in. Try to get it into that those that crease. I might have thinned this out a little too much. And I'm just gonna go along a little bit at a time, put my sprue goo in and hold it. You can see that. Now, I definitely don't wanna get this in on the clear part. So I'm gonna have to be pretty careful. This may take me a little bit, so you get the idea of what I'm, I'm, I'm doing here. So I'm just going to go around the entire edge of the windows and do this. And then uh, once this sets up, we can come back and look at it. And then I'll start sanding and filling right around this uh, join where the my window framing meets the rest of the fuselage. So see you in a bit. All right, fellas. So it's been, um, I don't know, a good 18 hours. And I think my sprue goo has had enough time to set up. So I went ahead and took some of my metallic pigment in CA and went along and tried to sand and smooth out and fill in any little gaps that I've got. Now it looks kind of like a mess right now. And uh, as you can see, I went ahead and masked it off. And I masked it off before I started sanding because I didn't want to accidentally scrape the windows and that would have been a big pain in the butt because they are recessed behind these uh, the plastic card that I have on there. So just by feel, I think I've got it pretty, pretty flush. I, um, I'm probably gonna have a few issues, like right down here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a, a little spot where I pushed too hard and the sprue goo kind of went in and, and it kind of made a mess. So uh, I will probably have an issue there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Mr. Surfacer 1000 and I'm going to go ahead and spray this. So this is not only going to check my work, but it's also going to uh, help me 
get rid of all these little scratches that I've got in here and then uh, it's going to show me where my problem areas are and then I'll just fill those in with some more Mr. Surfacer, sand them away and I should be good to go. Then I should be ready to close up the cockpit. Now I did install the little window here and I installed the windows here but you can see we're not going to use the windows. Um, something was off just a little bit and it looked kind of crooked and the glass windows that they have you attached from the inside just it didn't look right now somehow i was able to do that use the uh, clear glass on the old one that i did and you really can't see anything <laughs> so what i figured i would do is i will paint this like a uh, gloss black and then just put uh, ma mask it off like it's a window if you've seen my privateer build i did the same thing on the windows on the side so i think that will suffice since you really can't see anything anyway and i'm also going to paint the inside of this uh, little porthole window down here i'm going to paint inside of there black as well because there's really nothing to see in there and uh, i just think it will uh, solve any issues so uh, I mean obviously if you shine a light in there you're just gonna see the inside of the nasty <laughs> compartment uh, now I did finish the the cockpit and I'm not doing any washes because you really can't see a whole lot but I tried to use a lot of white and some bright colors the seats are supposed to be blue so um, I want it to be as bright as it could be still being somewhat realistic so you know when you look in there you'll be able to see some stuff but uh you know it's it's as far as i'm concerned you're really not going to see a whole lot so um hopefully that'll show up with a little bit of light that goes in there um i may actually i forgot to add some stuff in the back but we can do that before we install it so i'm going to get to spraying this with some mr servicer and then uh, we'll take a look at it and I'll start sanding and filling with uh, the primer. And we should be good to go on the windows. So hopefully, uh, one thing that I did do after all my sanding, I took it out in the garage and I blew it off with the air compressor just to get all the little particles of dust. And then I wiped it down with isopropyl alcohol. So hopefully I don't have any greeblies in in the crevices. I've blown those all away. And before I close up the cockpit, I will blow everything out again so I won't have any greeblies. And then there's a little piece that goes along the back here. This piece. <clears throat> and I will try to seal this up as best as possible so I don't, uh, if I have any more sanding or anything else, any uh, overspray or anything, I, I, I'll, I'll want to prevent it from getting up in there and getting greeblies on my windows. So... That's where I'm at. I'm going to get to spray on this and uh, catch you in a bit. Okay, so it's a little bit better than I thought in some areas and not quite as good as I thought in other areas. Now, hopefully the light will pick it up, but uh, I definitely have a seam line running along the nose that I didn't realize. And some of the area where I'd filled in with the CA glue and metallic pigment, I had missed. So I'm going to take care of that. Uh, also... This is obviously shrunken down. I apparently put on my CA and metallic pigment a little too soon. Uh, there is an area right along here that needs to be filled in. And uh, right along here should be sanded down a little bit more. And I can clean that up a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the same Mr. Surfacer. And... I'm just going to start filling in. So what I'll do is I'm just going to fill in this area right here. Just dot it in right along this seam line as well. Then I'll let this dry for a few hours till it's nice and nice and hard. Now this stuff does have a, a tendency to shrink a lot. So I will uh, let this dry thoroughly. Usually uh, five hours I'll come back to it if I don't really pile it on. With something like this, I think five hours is, is a uh, an adequate time to wait. You could wait longer, obviously. But I will put this on and then I will come back and I'll probably take a 
four 600 grit sandpaper and lightly sand away and smooth this out. And then I'll spray it again with an airbrush, <clears throat> check again, and basically wash, rinse, and repeat until I get it all smooth and uniform. So that is basically all there is to this, fellas. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to have issues throughout the my other seam lines if, if this is any indication. However, I am going to be adding some uh, strips of styrene to create the the uh, thermal blankets. So I don't want to do that yet on the on the uh, on the rest of the plane because I'm going to be using Tamiya Extra Thin to glue the strips of styrene down, and um, and you really can't do that over top of uh, the Mr. Servicer because it just makes a big mess. So. Uh, I will work on getting the nose, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all fixed and looking pretty. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. Now, I know uh, I'm filming this after I filmed the intro, so uh, I know you've already seen this, but we'll take a closer look at it. I'm pretty happy with the way everything's turned out on the front of the, uh, the orbiter. Now, one thing that I think I would do next time, and I would recommend if you're going to go the route I did and put the plastic card surrounding the windows, the clear parts, move it forward a little bit because the front windows, the way I did them, are spaced a little too far apart. I think if I would have just moved everything forward, then uh, I, I would have uh, remedied that issue and they'd be a little bit closer together and probably more accurate. But uh, overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. I wet sanded everything and uh, it looks pretty good. I think once I get paint and some black on there, I can camouflage the, uh, the discrepancy in the windows being a little bit farther apart than, than what I'd like. But um, I went ahead and unmasked the windows before I put the cockpit in because I wanted to see how the cockpit fit up in there. It was kind of tricky to get it. There are two ledges in the, in the back here that the cockpit fits up into. And I wanted to make sure that everything looked the way it was supposed to look up front. Now you can't see a whole lot in there, but you can tell that there's stuff going on. And that's why I didn't do any washes and like super detail the cockpit because you really can't see much. But I tried to use the bright colors and those do show up just a tad. And I don't know if the camera probably won't pick it up with the, with the lighting that we got here. But um, then I went ahead and sealed in this back plate, glued it in. And, uh, and then I took some foam. I, my, the guy that I'm building this for asked why I put the foam back here. And uh, what that is is just basic foam that I keep for, you know, sponge work or, you know, just whatever from different packages that I get in the mail. And uh, what I did was I glued that in with white glue and because there was a little bit of a gap here on the bottom where stuff could get into the, to the cabin area. And I want to prevent little greeblies and stuff if I if I happen to sand or you know whatever. I don't want stuff getting up inside of here that I'm not going to be able to get out. So I try to seal my cabins and cockpits up as best I can. So I think that's a, a fairly decent solution. Um, it doesn't add much weight, and it uh, does the job of sealing up the cabin. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, well, what I what I did. Uh, right along here. These are just little pieces that I fit along here just to give a little extra support on the bay doors whenever I install them so they don't uh, so it kind of keeps them straight. Now I talked about this earlier. I used uh, 0 .010 plastic card and I glued each side. I lined these up as best I could and then I glued each side here on the bottom with the plastic card. So it's still a little movable. I can bend it but it's going to hold its shape. Now, rather than glue one at a time and then have an issue where they're not aligning up here, I've already got it aligned with the method that I chose to do on top. So the next thing I need to do is just set it on here and glue it down. And I did a lot of test fitting and I ended up having to shave because I put plastic card right along here in the bottom so I could fill in all these places where the holes were for the hinges. Um, so I had to shave a little bit of that as well. Uh, just to get it to fit the way I wanted it to. But as you can see, this is going to be fairly easy just to put on there. And <laughs> from what I remember the on the last one that I did, 
This fits a thousand times better than the last one that I tried that I didn't use this method on. So uh, take a look here. You just got to hold it down. I mean, there's still, it's not uh, to me a quality fit, but overall for this kit and from what I remember, this is a really good fit. And I don't, and I'm going to try to avoid using any filler other than maybe I might use some of my testers putty to even up the seams or, or something like back here. But keep in mind, I am going to do some weathering on it and I am going to add the thermal blankets with some styrene strips and some Mr. Surfacer. So I think that will also hide some of these crimes as Adam Savage would say. So basically how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to get this where I want it. And I'm just going to tape it down like so in different spots. Just like this. And uh, I'll probably put a couple other pieces of tape. Then I'm going to run some uh, probably plastic weld, my Plastruct, right along here in different spots, get it tacked down, lift up my tape, and then glue the rest of it with plastic weld. And then I'll come along and run a bead of probably, uh, to me, an extra thin right along the top here just to strengthen that up just a little bit. And I think I'm going to be good to go on this part. So I'm going to do that all on off camera because it is going to take um, a little bit of time and three hands, which I only have two. So I'm going to have to deal with that. But uh, I think this is going to work out pretty well. So I'll get this glued up and then we'll come back and take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at what we got. So the bay doors are on. Overall, I'm pretty happy with them. They're locked down pretty solidly. Now I am gonna have to come in here and uh, do something with this little uh, latching nub on uh, both ends. There are a couple little gaps, which I'm not real concerned with. I can fill those in with testers putty. But uh, what I'm actually gonna end up doing is I'm gonna put thermal blankets down much the way that Duty Cat did with his. And that's gonna be simply laying down some, or gluing down these thin strips of styrene and in the shape of the, the squares of the blankets. And then I'm gonna come back with some Mr. Surfacer and uh, hand brush that on, and then come back with a Zimmeret tool and try to replicate the quilting that is seen on the thermal blankets. So a lot of that's gonna cover this, this area up. And I am gonna add some hinges. They're probably with some stretch sprue, just put little hinges there and, uh, and then paint those when I'm done or at the, at the painting stage. So that's looking pretty good. Now, because I'm modeling this as the Columbia during a STS 107, they had a camera mounted up here on the tail fin. So what I've ended up settling on was a piece of acrylic rod, and I forgot what diameter this was, but uh, I've just drilled, a, I put a, a brass tube in the back and then some wire up here, because what I'm gonna do is put some, uh, five minute epoxy inside here. And I wanted something just to, to help grab on other than just the contact with the uh, five minute epoxy to the just the, the bare acrylic. So I wanted something to give it just a little extra help in, uh, in holding it down in case I bump it or something. But I've got this carved out and this acrylic rod should fit in here just like that. Now I what I to round this off, I just took a file and started rounding it and then one of my sanding sticks, so I got a nice rounded edge right here to, to uh, mimic what was on the, uh, on the, uh, what the camera looked like. So I think that's gonna be a pretty close representation. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to uh, epoxying this, and then uh, I'll probably come in with some of my uh, Magic Sculpt and uh, smooth the transition out between the acrylic rod and and the uh, tail fin here. So uh, I will, once I'm done with this, I'll flash up some pictures so you can get a good look at it. And uh, I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching, fellas.